honey, you can try and try and try the rest of your life. That to me is negative. You take try out of your vocabulary. It's coming. It's coming and that's it. Trying means you keep on trying. I never try. I do something. The first time you win something, I'd imagine those around you would think, oh, that's pretty cool. The second time you win a contest, they'd think you're on a lucky streak. Perhaps around a tenth time, they'd assume you're just a very lucky person. And by the time you win your brand new 4,300 square foot fully furnished home, I'd imagine there'd be some envy. But what would they think after your 50th win? Your 100th? How about after 1,000 wins? How many times would you have to win before people started realizing that maybe there's something more here? Maybe you're rigging the system, or maybe you've unlocked a code, some sort of metaphysical formula, which ensures that no matter which contest you enter, no matter how high the stakes are, you always win. Today, let's learn the winning method of the contest queen, the woman who wins every contest she enters, the winning sage, Helene Hatzel, the woman who won over 5,000 contests. For this part of the video, we're going to touch very briefly on the history of Helene Hatzel, but if it is something that you're not interested in, that is totally okay. Feel free to skip ahead to the next section where we will learn about the spec method. Helene and her family began their new hobby of entering contests back in 1948. The first thing she ever won was a perm kit, however, she only won this one year later in 1949. Interestingly enough, though she continued to enter contests, she rarely won anything, and this went on for approximately 10 years. In 1957, after taking a correspondence course on contest writing, the family began to experience more luck, frequently winning multiple prizes from food mixers, toys, and presumably other minor items. However, it wasn't until 1959 when, after reading Norman Vincent Peale's The Power of Positive Thinking, that she began to learn how to win every time. From this point on, it appeared as though she couldn't lose. She just kept winning multiple trips to Disneyland, New York, and Europe. Life was wonderful. In spite of this success, Helene was not yet satisfied. She wanted to win something big, and she knew exactly how. At the 1964-65 New York World Fair, the Formica Corporation had an exhibit where they displayed a house. The company ran a contest in which the grand prize was a $50,000 replica of that house to be built anywhere in the United States, lot included. For reference, $50,000 is about $500,000 in today's money. Of course, a grand prize of this magnitude would entice even a skeptic to enter, and everyone did, about 1.5 million people in fact. But this amount of entries did not shake the faith of Helene. She knew she had already won, and she prepared for that house as though it were hers now. But could faith alone really help one person beat out 1.5 million other people? They were all deserving. They all took that necessary action towards the fulfillment of their house by entering the contest. Could the spec method really be that powerful and favorable for one woman who chose to use it? I'd love to keep the minor suspense going, but I won't. Helene won that house, deciding to have it built in Irving, Texas. What is this powerful spec method that helped this one woman win anything she wanted? We're going to explain that right now. It isn't really too complicated. It stands for select it, project it, expect it, collect it. It's got a nice ring to it. Select it. Define your desire. What do you want that feels reasonable for you to have now? Of course, anything you want is reasonable for you now, but you are still a human being rooted in logic. If it feels illogical for you to attain a billion dollars overnight, then I wouldn't recommend you start with this. The first recorded item Helene ever won after practicing her methods was an outboard motor. Now this doesn't mean that you have to start with a cup of coffee. It's only a recommendation for you to choose a goal that is both important to you and seems rational for you to have now and then work your way up. Ask yourself, what is the most important goal I wish to accomplish? Think about it seriously. Is it positive, constructive, and creative? Sort of imagine having it. Feel how it feels to have it. How will it change your lifestyle? 
After selecting your goal, project having it right now in your current reality, not in the distant reality. Eerily similar to Neville Goddard's SATS technique, lull yourself into a meditative state and within your imagination create a short scene a scene where you have now achieved what it is that you want it's in your possession right now what's most important about this session is that you feel the natural feelings of having what it is that you want as a personal note i like to focus on the mediocrity and the normalcy of having my desire in my life now like pumping the gas in my new car or having to drill a hole in my wall to hang my play button the reason for this is reminding myself of the general upkeep takes my thing off the pedestal expect it change your expectations and you change your conditions begin to act as if you expect success happiness and abundance prepare for good after projecting your selection expect it this is a very calm still and quiet knowing within yourself that you already have it an analogy for you is online shopping the day you purchase your item isn't the day you receive it. The moment you project your goal may not be the moment that you physically receive it, but you bought it. It's yours now. Go prepare a place for it. Helene reported that prior to winning her dream home, she had already picked out a lot and had plans drawn up before she was declared the winner. And before she won an international trip, she had already acquired the passports and the immunizations required before actually winning it. Collect it. After you've selected, projected, and expected your goal, now all you gotta do is collect it. Basically, when it comes looking for you, collect it. And that's the spec method. Now, I know you didn't think I'd end this video without over-explaining a few things, right? The spec method is sweet and simple and will yield success to anyone who uses it correctly. However, you cannot plant a palm tree in the wrong frozen environment and expect it to grow. Your mind is a garden, and the goal is to cultivate an environment that is so fertile that no matter which method you try for anything you want to accomplish, it can grow. Helene Hatzel had a very rich mindset that made her incredibly attracted to anything she selected. There's no failure only delay in results. As you develop positive thinking, success replaces failure until you can no longer fail. Don't be flighty. If you have a goal or desire, hang in there until you get it, she says. She denounced the existence of failure and embraced the principle of persistence, never doubting her vision according to the physical circumstances. Begin to love completely. Love everything unconditionally. The clouds, wind, stones, trees, animals, insects, and all the people you come into contact with. This is sometimes the most difficult task. You must love and respect everything. This is not physical love, but rather a universal feeling, a common bond and harmony with all. God's consciousness is in everything and we must love all of it. Helene upheld a positive spirit of universal love. Nothing is inherently good or bad, but it's all deserving of love. For me, this simulates the idea of accountability. Holding yourself in a position of power by understanding that if you can create anything you want in your life, then you have already created everything currently in your life through your thoughts, feelings, and actions. By taking accountability, you take the conscious power. Understand that all the bad things that you've experienced in your life so far have already paid their debts to you. Had it not been for them, you would not have known so passionately and clearly what it is that you want. Abraham Hicks refers to this concept as contrast. You couldn't recognize love and warmth from one if you've never experienced indifference and absence from another. What happens is, when you love everything equally, you take the things you want off the pedestal 
making them your equal. You are no smaller nor larger than that man or woman that you want in your life, hun. That car you want or the career that you want or the physical body that you want wants you because without you, it only exists in your imaginal realm. You give it physical life. I think that makes you pretty cool. And that's the mindset. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you. Helene Hatzel is a lovely teacher who shared everything she knew based off her own experience with us so that we can create the lives of harmony, bliss, and wellness that we dream of. I found a beautiful article recently covering Helene Hatzel in greater detail than my video has provided, and I will leave the link to that down below in the description box for your interest. It has been a pleasure covering Helene Hatzel today, and I hope this video helps you along in your journey. And with that being said, thank you for watching this video. I truly do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I trust you'll give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this one. So how did you like today's video and what video would you like to see next? You let me know in the comment section down below. I cannot wait to see you in the next video. Toodles.